this week what would that conversation look like i'd be like uh you're absolutely joking um i mean when i was that age i couldn't even tell you much about nebraska volleyball i knew that it was a powerhouse of a school they won all the time but i didn't know about their culture i didn't know about their legacy i didn't know about how much the fans cared and let alone like I would be chosen a part of this team and that Coach Cook would want me to play for him one day. I mean, 10 year old me was probably Minecrafting if I'm being honest. I was probably at home, I don't know, just playing video games. And so the fact that this is gonna be a reality in a matter of 48 hours is insane. Or two, 24 hours? 24 hours, close to? Yeah, close, very close. My ten, like if I had a 10 year or what do you mean? Oh my goodness, my 10 year old girls just never stop dreaming. I mean, you really can do whatever you put your mind to, just know that it's going to be hard. Um, I mean, nowadays the competition's getting harder and harder, the levels of volleyball are going up. I mean, I've seen 14 year olds balling like seven, 18 year olds, 17, 18 year olds. It's, I mean, it's gonna be one of those things that you're gonna have to learn to commit to. Um, at an earlier age, a lot earlier than I had to. So, I mean, maybe put down the computer or put down the phone earlier than you wanted to, but just know that getting those reps and saying no to certain things will open you up to who knows, who knows what, like a volleyball day in Nebraska. <laughs> Did you go to many or any football games as a kid here? No, but I always wanted to. Uh, I got to go to tailgates. So uh, my stepdad, Bill, was a football player here at the university. And he had a tailgate spot um, just across or by over the championship center over here. And I remember constantly hearing, like when Nebraska would score a touchdown, and I was always curious. I never got to be inside the stadium until about two years ago with my mom. It was just me and her. We scored some tickets from, I think it was a coworker. And I thought it was really sick. Um, we actually got to come when it was the 9 11 tribute, and I was in tears. I was absolutely sweaty, but in tears. Um, I mean, my family, we are very much military oriented. Um, my dad serves or served and he's a state trooper now, but um, yeah, getting to be a part of that and specifically that day was incredible. Beth, I'm sure you and your team it's have a ton of emotions with this. You know, what, what are there? I'm sure there's some anxiety, some nervousness, some excitement. How do you navigate all of those and, and what are you feeling about all this? Oh my goodness. Um, it's, it's an emotional experience. Like, like you said, it, you hit all of them. I mean, anxiety, excitement, um, I mean, it honestly leaves me speechless because I was telling, I mean, I have the athletes, I've got, I'm good friends with a lot of the other athletes and they'll ask me, so like, are you excited for tomorrow? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's hard to grasp 94,000 people and playing, I mean, like I said, I went to that game with my mom and just seeing all those people standing and cheering and getting into it and the fact that they're going to be doing it for us is crazy. I mean, just to be to be seen by that many people at one time, all eyes on you. I mean, I could, I don't know, be filling up waters and people are gonna be staring. And it, it's just, it's weird to think about. And so, yeah, anxiety is definitely one of them. Cause you know, you wanna look good. I mean, who wants to look bad in front of 94,000 people? But I mean, the biggest thing is we just don't wanna disappoint. You know, UNO is a respectful competitor. And so we wanna give them our best shot as well. Um, but the other thing is like, we don't wanna take one moment uh, for granted because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Did you ask the football team for like advice on like what it's like to play in front of that many people or do you just experience it without uh, asking about it? No, but that's a great idea. I, ca I can't say I've asked any of them, hey, do you have any pointers? I mean, maybe how to not trip from the transition from the carpet for the, to the grass. But I mean, no, I'm, I got a couple of football friends I could ask, but as of right now, it was just kind of jump in the deep end, feel it out, try not to trip. So, you know, those, those types of things. I mean, are you going to wear any extra stuff and be playing outside in the heat and humidity? No, that's the thing. Um, I'll probably just stick to my usual. I mean, my friends are throwing different things at me, like a slick back bun. For all the girls, I know it's kind of trending right now. So it keeps all, like, the little flyaways. As you can tell, my hair's a little, like, frizzy right now. So hopefully maybe have a headband or two on hand. But, um, no, nothing crazy. I'm not usually about the bling and coaches and about the bling either. So we'll keep it simple like we always do. You were up here six months ago and they announced this too. I mean, when, when during the past six months did it set up like, this is gonna happen, I'm gonna be out there, this is real? I don't know, it's, it's almost like I blacked it all out. Um, 
anytime coach, he was giving us pep talks about this. Like, this is a really big deal. And it's almost like, it's like, you guys really need to understand, you need to be grateful for this because we've had all types of athletes come through. I mean, like, why didn't this happen when Jordan Larson was here? Why didn't this happen, Sarah Pavin, all of these amazing legends. And it's us, like, we got chosen to have this. And he pushes it on us every day, like, attitude of gratitude. Like, we don't know when this is gonna happen again, if ever. Um, so yeah, that's just been like the biggest thing is just staying grounded. After the match, I'm sure you'll probably be emotionally drained. So will you wanna just get out of here as soon as you can or are you gonna go soak in the concert and just enjoy the night? Oh, we're gonna soak it in, man. Are you kidding? I mean, we got a country concert. I've been thinking about bringing my boots. So, you know, a little country appreciation, but um, no, it'll be a good time. They, are, they said that they'll let us sit on the court. So we'll have like front row seats basically. And it's just going to be a huge celebration. That's really the whole goal of this. So, yes, we will definitely be at the concert. With an outdoor match, Becca, what are you most concerned about? Sunlight, wind, you know, if it's oh, going to be really hot. All the uncontrollables. You know, we – coach has thrown at us that we could wear sunglasses. A couple of us have matching ones, like, from beach season. So we might whip out the pit vipers, so that could be fun. Um, but, I mean, as of right now – we're talking about bringing extra gear. If we have time to go change, extra spandex socks, you know, just the essentials. Um, everyone's pretty much on standby to wipe down the floor. Not one person is going to be too good for it. You know, we got to help each other out. Even UNO, honest, like if it's wet, we'll, we will wait. Um, the biggest thing is just keeping each other safe um, just so we can have a good time. But yeah, as of right now, we're just going to press on whatever's thrown at us. You know, coach always says the great ones adjust. So yeah. You've played, played beach, and beach has played with a heavier ball, right? What, I mean, what is the difference between the indoor ball and a beach ball, and how do you think the wind will impact that? Well, we're going to find out tonight. We got practice from 6 to 8, and that's pretty much what's going to be his experiment. Coaches, I'm grateful that he's giving us a chance to practice the day before just so we can feel it out. Um, I was talking to Lexi this morning at Waits, and I was like, I'm going into tonight's practice as a beach practice. So have zero expectations and just have really, like, try really hard and have tons of fun because that's pretty much the expectation with beach because majority of us if not all of us are indoor players so yeah as for the difference in the ball um i honestly imagine we're gonna have to hit it harder so one thing we talk about in beach is you will have wind coming in another direction as well as the sun so when it comes to the sun you just gotta you gotta try your hardest because there's not really much you can do to block out the sun other than squint so um as for the actual ball, uh, we talk about with the wind is actually trying to hit it into the wind. So there might be a couple of beach lingo tactics thrown into the match tomorrow night. Becca, besides just actually playing a match in Memorial, things like the tunnel walk, being in the football locker room, we talked about that a couple weeks ago even. How excited are you to do some of those traditions? I'm pumped. I kind of wish I had a couple of pads on and we could just like <laughs> run into each other and like feel like a bunch of dogs, but no, um, it'll be sick. I was walking to class the other, or not to class, I was walking to go see the trainer the other day and they had those red lights that the boys get to sit around and wait till they open the big doors. And it just really had me thinking, I'm like, man, what a production, you know, it just kind of goes to show that like football, volleyball, it's a really big deal here. And so it's cool that we get a taste of it. I have to ask you, when you're talking about just the environment and getting to play in front of this, how do you prepare to play in front of that people, many people, but also knowing communication is going to be so key, but yes. like there's a chance you might not even be able to hear each other at times because of the crowd. So how are you preparing for it, knowing that you won't get to experience it until you experience it? Um, well, one thing that I'm super grateful for is almost all of us have played. I think actually all of us have played on an international stage. And we have been in semifinals, championships, where we've got people yelling in languages we've never heard or we just cannot comprehend. So we're used to those kinds of environments where we can only really hear the girl standing right next to us. Um, and the biggest thing is staying calm. And your, your communication has got to be direct. It can't be this yelling frantic, hey, like you have this, you have, no. It's gotta be, hey, you have short, I have this. And it's gotta be the very deliberate, calm communication just because it's almost like it gets so loud, it just becomes like just this blurring noise. And it's, it's just like you and the girls on the court. And so, like I said, um, falling back onto our international experience, I think that's going to help us out a lot. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, this event isn't just a celebration of you guys. So many former players right. are coming back. Um, I guess, what does that mean to you and the program just to see the people who built it before you? Like I said, just grateful. I mean, I think to myself often, like with it coming up, like why us, you know, like why do I get to be a part of this? Just because like they've accomplished so many great things. I feel like they even did more than I did at my age. And it's like, 
every all the cards fell into my favor for me to be able to be a part of this day and the fact that they're all coming to not only just celebrate us but obviously themselves because they are the reason that this program is such a big deal like they went and they paved the way and our goal is just not only fill their shoes but to add more hardware onto our shelves and so it's just you know it's about a legacy like this program isn't a joke like we live it you know it's a sisterhood and um you know once a part of this program you're always a part of this program like you wear this end with pride and I'm just really grateful I mean it's super cool it's like a bunch of legends in the house all for one night and I think it's really sick Becca, you've been looking forward to this for a long time what was it like to see the court in Memorial Stadium for the first time you can't help but smile and laugh it's just you get all giddy it's like a kid on Christmas you know it's it's really hard to put into words because I feel like anything I say won't won't do it justice it's it's such a gift I mean beyond blessed I I don't know how else to put it it's just super cool <laughs> Have you been out on the court and what were your impressions of how the setup out there? It just got real. It's like the weight of everything is starting to set in. Me and Allie B, um, we call each other walking through the tunnel and she started to freak out and then I looked down and then I started to freak out and she's like, you want to go on it? I was like, sure. So we made a couple TikToks and had some fun. We did like one video where we like ran and dove into the camera and honest, like that video, it sort of like shortly captures just kind of how we were feeling. Like we were just having a good time. We're like, you know, this is a great opportunity. And yeah, so I did get to go on it and it was super cool. And the guys that were help setting it up, they were super, they were cracking jokes at us and it was super fun. And again, just super grateful. Beyond, beyond just Husker athletics and, and Nebraska volleyball, what does it say about women's athletics in general? Um, we got a bunch of hustlers out in the state. I mean, we got girls that carry their own. I mean, look at the soccer program, the softball program. Like, it's no joke out here. You come out here and you grind. And that's one thing I love about the culture here is um, I can say, like, going to high school, just, you know, as a female athlete in high school, if you weren't, like, in, say, in basketball, if I wasn't dunking the ball, then I wasn't doing anything. I mean, the women's game is typically played below the rim, so you always felt like you had to do something more. But here it's appreciated. You show up, you work your butt off, you play your heart out in the game, and you got fans that have your back. And, you know, it's all about playing the game that we love, regardless of where it's played at or what it is. I mean, I don't know. It's just something special about this, this state and how they appreciate women's sports. Like, they treat us like any other athlete. And that's really all women's athletes ask for is, like, not like, oh, I'm a woman athlete. No, I'm an athlete. And, like, that's how they see us is, like, we work our butt off and we get appreciated for it. All right. We'll bring Mary Pisa up next. Thanks, Becca. Yeah, thanks, guys. Okay, questions for Mary. Has it hit you yet? No, I don't think really any of us are able to grasp what's really happening and going down tomorrow, but I, I think it'll hit us all once we're walking out of the tunnel. Just 93,000 people is kind of hard to wrap your head around, and the fact that they're here for us and here supporting us is kind of crazy to think about. So it's kind of hard to put it into perspective and to prepare for it, honestly. Have you seen the tunnel? I mean, you haven't been to a Nebraska football game before, too. Have you seen it? Have you heard from other people about it? What have they told you about the tunnel walk? A little bit. I really don't have a ton of knowledge on it. I haven't been to a Nebraska football game, so this will be my first time seeing people in Memorial Stadium, and I'll be the one playing, so it's kind of weird to think about it that way. But, I mean, I'm a newbie just like the freshmen, so I'm kind of figuring it out and learning as I go, too. So I've heard a little bit, but definitely haven't seen it, been a part of it, or anything like that yet. Yeah, Merritt, just the fact that you get to be a part of this day, your first season as a Husker, did you ever think you would be experiencing something like this? No, not at all. I, I lucked out coming at this time. I think um, everything happens for a reason, and I truly believe that, but it is such an honor to be a part of it. And, you know, I think this team as a whole is super grateful for the opportunity that we do have, and I think it just speaks a lot about Nebraska as a whole, the state and our athletic program and the volleyball program here and how much support that we do have. So I have to give a lot of credit to the state and the program as a whole, but it's a super cool opportunity, and I'm so grateful to be a part of it. Merritt, as a captain, how have you and Lexi and kind of the coaches been trying to help, you know, settle in the expectations and the emotions of the day? 
Yeah, I think, I mean, we're just treating it like it's another game day. Obviously, it's a very big deal, but at the end of the day, our goal is to win the match tomorrow. So um, we're just going into it like it's any other game day. And we've played volleyball our whole life, so not much is changing in that aspect of kind of how we prepare, you know, just remaining calm, making sure that we're all grateful and understand the opportunity that we do have. But also at the end of the day, it's, it's another volleyball match. So that's kind of how we're going at it, so. But it's an outdoor match. And mm -hmm. How do you prepare for that aspect of kind of getting ready for, I don't know if there's different style or just how do you prepare for the outdoor aspect of it? Yeah, we'll see tonight at practice. Uh, we haven't played outside since beach season. I think beach will help us a ton just because we do have that experience playing outside. Obviously, it's very different, but we have played volleyball outside before every single person on the team has so I think we'll kind of lean on that a little bit but we'll find out tonight we have our first practice so we'll kind of see how it is playing with six people outside on a TerraFlex court not in the sand things like that we'll kind of figure it out as we go are you planning to wear any sweatbands have a towel on your sunglasses or anything else I'll definitely have towels because I sweat a ton indoor so I'm not ready for how much I'm going to sweat outside and I'll have to completely change in between the two sets. So we'll see, we'll be prepared. Some people are bringing some sunglasses, things like that, but for the most part, we'll look pretty normal like we do inside. How surreal was it to see your court just sitting out there in the middle of the stadium? Like it is a little surreal just to yeah. look down like that. Yeah, no, it's crazy. And I, like I said, it's really hard to put into perspective. You, We've been talking about it for so long and you just kind of think of it like, oh, like six months away, four months away, like we still have a long time and now it's tomorrow. So it's kind of weird to think about. And I, like I said, I really don't think it's gonna hit most of us until we walk out there tomorrow to go play. But it's just amazing opportunity for us and for women's sports in general and just the sport of volleyball. Volleyball is growing a ton in the US and I think this is one big stepping stone for volleyball, but also women's sports in general. So I think it's a great opportunity. And like I've said before, we're just so grateful to be a part of it. Is your family making the trip? And if they are, how excited are you for them to experience something like this? Yeah, yeah. my mom, dad, and some of my uncles and cousins and grandparents are gonna be able to come, which is really exciting because they haven't been able to make it so far this fall. So I'll be able to see them for the first time and for them to be able to share this experience with me is really cool. And I don't know, I feel like I'm gonna be telling my kids about it one day and so for my parents to be there as well and just for my family to be able to be here with me while something's so crazy and you know, we're making history. So it's really cool for them to be here and to be a part of it with me. This is a date that a lot of people have been looking forward to since it was announced and class is canceled tomorrow and you might set the record for the largest attended women's sporting event in US history. Have you guys grasped the gravity of what might actually be happening tomorrow? No, I mean, it's crazy to think about. And like I've said, I just, we're so blessed to be a part of it. And I think it's really, it's gonna do a lot for our sport and for women's sports, kind of like Becca talked about, like we just wanna have the same opportunities as male athletes get. And I think Nebraska kind of being the first one to lead that charge says a ton about our school and our state. And I think it's really special for me to be a part of that and to be a part of a school that cares so much about their women's athletics. And so I'm honestly excited to see what happens next, maybe softball, maybe basketball, women's basketball, whatever it is. But I think Nebraska kind of taking the charge says a lot about our state and our our athletic department and Trev and everyone who's put so much into it. So super excited about it and excited to see what happens next. I asked Becca about the communication piece of it, but as a captain, how do you maybe build on what she was talking about with that direct, concise communication, knowing that like the crowd will obviously try to be as quiet as it can yeah. be when it needs to be, but it's going to be hard with that many people to be yeah, it could get really loud at times. Yeah, I mean, one thing that we've been working on this entire season is tight huddles. No matter what happens after the play, if we lose that point, whatever it may be, we're going to have a really tight huddle so that we're still united as a team. And I think that's going to be really important tomorrow. That way, in those tight huddles, we can give that direct feedback like, hey, watch this. Hey, this person hit here last time, whatever it may be. So I think that's going to be really important for us because, like you said, during a rally or during a point, we might not be able to hear each other. And so that feedback after and in timeouts and things like that will be really important. So I think that'll probably be our main focus is just getting that clear, short, quick feedback out during huddles and timeouts and things like that will be very important. You're, this is still a regular season match. I mean, you still have a Big Ten title, a national championship title you're chasing. What do you think you can take from tomorrow's event to carry on through the rest of the season? I think just the support I think is really huge for this team. And I think knowing that we have 
90 plus thousand people behind us and we have a state and an athletic program that's willing to put this on for this program and we get to be a part of it is kind of cool when you think about it so I think just the support and knowing that we do have all those people behind us to go throughout Big Tens and hopefully on to win a national championship obviously is our goal so I think it's definitely the support and just knowing how much we're taking care of how much the athletic program how much the state everything like that how much they care for us I think will be huge for us your advice for fans that are coming tomorrow bring water it's gonna be hot <laughs> stay hydrated and just have fun I think just taking it all in like we are I think you know fans get to be a part of making history too so I think it's super cool for them to be able to be there and to share the experience with us so but definitely stay hydrated don't want anyone passing out or anything <laughs> questions I think there's gonna be 40 buses of high school teams coming in there I mean does oh, really? that 30, 40 on buses of different wow. club teams, high school. Yeah. I mean, knowing that you're playing in front of the next generation of volleyball players, I mean, what does that inspire you or what are your kind of reaction yeah. to that? I mean, that's what we do it for ultimately at the end of the day. I know most people on our team play because someone inspired them. And so, you know, whoever it was for that person on our team, we get to be that for young girls now. And so I think it's so cool for us. And I think that's what drives a lot of people on our team is they want to do it for the person after us. And so I think it's super cool for us to be able to obviously be in this environment, but for so many young girls to be able to be here and to share the experience with us, like I said. And Bob's obviously very hard to get into. So I'm glad that lots of young girls are able to come and watch a match and, you know, like I said, be a part of something crazy that's about to happen. With that in mind, there's almost 100 former Nebraska volleyball players who are going to be here. What does it mean that this isn't just a celebration of you guys as this active team, but it's a celebration of everything that came before, too? Yeah, I mean, they're the ones that laid the groundwork. They're the ones that paved the way for us. So, I mean, you have to give them tons of credit because if they didn't do what they did, we wouldn't be in the position that we're in today. So I think it's awesome that a lot of them are able to come back. I'm excited to meet a lot of them because I haven't before. So I'm super excited to meet a lot of them. But like I said, you know, it's celebrating the program as a whole and they ultimately are the ones that have paved the way for this program. And so because of their hard work and because of what they've done is why we're able to be here today. So got to give them tons of credit. Do you have anything on your to-do list? I mean, outside of a usual match routine, anything on your to-do list special for to make sure you do? I don't think so. Maybe some sunscreen, just to make sure. <laughs> some face sunscreen for sure. But for the most part, everything will be pretty much the same. Um, like I said, we're just playing volleyball. And so I think I'm just going to look at it that way, try not to hype it up too much, and then in the moment soak it all in. But I don't want to overthink it too much going into the game. Just another day playing volleyball. All right, thank you. Thank you. Coach Cook will be here shortly.
Okay. All right. Volleyball day in Nebraska. Here we go. I was out there last night. Felt great. Uh, it was a great setup. And uh, a lot of people have been working really hard. They're, they're, uh, I live downtown here. The n lights are on all night. So it's, they've been working really, really hard. And, uh, you know, everywhere you go in town, everywhere you go, the people are talking about this. So this is uh, pretty exciting and uh, looking forward to it. Uh, be interesting to see how practice goes tonight. I think that's my biggest anticipation is how how will we play out there because I walked out there I actually had to go measure the court because I thought it was they messed it up it was too small because it just with out there it, it just looks smaller than when it's in Devaney so uh, but I, I walked it off it was accurate but anyway here we go it's it's still really. Like last night, I started feeling like, okay, this is really going to happen. But to see that place packed is, uh, there's no way to prepare for it. It's and then all the hype, the tunnel walk. I mean, there's there's a lot going on. This is going to be a great challenge for our players to stay focused on playing volleyball. How meaningful is it for you that it's not just you know a celebration of this current team, but a celebration of you know, all of the teams that have come before. Yeah, so. I was uh, just talking to a really good friend of mine this morning who who uh, <clears throat> brought up that, you know, this is, if you think about where women's sports started and then what's going to happen tomorrow night, I mean, this is a celebration for all that and for all the, you know, uh, all the women that first started getting a chance to play sports, but there's a lot of women that didn't ever got a chance. And, and to see this happen, and again, I, I keep flashing back to when the soccer team uh, played in the Rose Bowl, um, the USA soccer team, and, and I, I can still vividly remember that whole scene, the whole match. I think it was Brandy, you know, the celebration, and you know that was a that was a big moment for women's sports, and it really shot soccer up. And, and uh, this is another great chance for that to happen, and for the sport of volleyball. What element that's different from indoor do you think will impact the play the most? I think the the two biggest things will be depth perception. So it's you you have sky, and we're used to having a ceiling. Even if we're, if we're in CHI or somewhere, you still have a ceiling. There's no ceiling, so that'll be the first thing. But we play beach, so they can acclimate to that. And then uh, the other thing will be the wind and. Um, you know, the, the wind forecast sounds really good, uh, but there'll be some little swirls and stuff in there and just just kind of being mindful of that. But other than that, oh, the other thing is, you know, the benches are are off the stage. So everything's pretty far away because they made that stage really big just to make sure nobody could run off of it and and fly out there. So uh, there's a there's a big there's a court area. And then uh, once you leave that, there's another, I don't know how many, 20, 30 feet of stage, but one, the, the play is dead once you leave the Terraflex. So if somebody's real, like Lanny Choby's really flying out there, she has room to slow down before she would go off the stage. And uh, so they, they made that stage, I think, bigger than what they originally planned. Is anybody going to be on that platform to coach where the benches, the benches are going to be below that? I don't know. We're going to figure it out today in practice because it's, you're right, it's, you know, the bench will be down below the stage. So we'll have to figure out. It's pretty far away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we, we, uh, we'll figure it out today. Yeah, what are your kind of goals going into that practice to get them ready for tomorrow? Just get used to it. Uh, we're going to do a practice tunnel walk. We're just going to try to front load them on everything that's going to happen and then and get used to playing outside and and – like I said, the depth perception. That's going to be really different for them. You talked a lot about the potential of rain. And like now that that is not possible, the next thing, though, is humidity and what that could do for the court. How are you feeling about that heading into the we, we, we tested it last week when it was 105 and the humidity was whatever it was. And the court did great. So it's uh, no worries there. And no worries with rain. and. The only other thing I was worried about was smoke, because 
I think we're under a health warning or something. So hopefully that doesn't factor in, but. Is, uh, is court communication a concern tomorrow night with so many people? And who's one Husker you won't have to worry about being loud on the court tomorrow night? Well, Lane, Laney will be one. And um, uh, Lindsey Krause is very vocal and, and Merritt. So we, we, got our, we got our talkers out there that'll, they'll, those guys will make sure. But you're right, it could be, yeah, it'll be, inter like, it'll be interesting. Um, all I know in Devaney, I need to get on our fans. On Devaney Sunday, it was, Matt Cotney made a great line. He, he says, I feel like I'm watching a golf tournament. We're putting on the 18th of the Masters. It was so quiet in there. So our fans need to step it up. <laughs> it's one of the reasons it was Sunday was such a weird match. This is still a regular season match, part of the grind of going for a Big Ten title, going deep in the postseason, too. I mean, what do you hope the players take from this event that they can carry forward to have a better outcomes later on, later this season? I, you know, I don't, I don't know if how that will apply because this is so different than what we normally do. Uh, but one thing is for our younger players, <clears throat> it's going to be – I mean, I've already – I, I said it feels like a Super Bowl is going on here to me, and that's what it's going to feel like to them, or a Final Four, maybe even on Final Four, like even times four. So <clears throat> just being a part of a big event and all that goes with it and everything going on, I think that's what it's going to prepare them for is next time this happens or we get to a Final Four, they're going to be used to this, the show that goes on besides the volleyball match and all the attention and everything that goes with it. How will you guide your players with this tomorrow, John, in terms of trying to soak it all in and understanding what they're a part of, but then also trying to win a volleyball match too? You know? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to own, the, own each moment, you know? Just how are we gonna, because it's all new to me too, you know? So I haven't been through this. So uh, uh, just trying to, just take advantage of it, make sure <clears throat> we kind of prep them on as much as we can that we know, and there's going to be some stuff that we can't. But <clears throat> I can tell you this, I did have this thought yesterday when I was down, you were out there filming, and I'm like, this is as close as I'm going to be to being the head football coach in Nebraska playing down here. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> you know, this is what it's going to feel like for Coach Rule in a couple of weeks. So I was act that was actually like flowing through me. Like this is this is what it's gonna feel like to be a football coach. <laughs> you have anything on your kind of to do list tomorrow? Make sure that you kind of have that full experience and take advantage of the moment. No, I haven't thought that far yet. Trent's kind of talked about in the past about how he how he wants to use this building for more than football. I mean, depending how everything goes tomorrow night, would you want to use the skin, or we have to have, maybe have an answer tomorrow night? I, I that'd be something to think about down the road. I'm not sure this is something you do every year. Uh, and, and uh, but it's a great idea and it, it could be a great uh, example for other things that could happen. Maybe it's basketball, maybe softball plays down there, maybe soccer, uh, maybe more concerts. So I don't know, Let's, maybe we have, you know, have a PBR rodeo in here. That'd be awesome. <laughs> John, you talked about this being a celebration of players that have come before, but how meaningful just for you to have some of your former women here supporting being a part of this great event? Yeah, there's going to be former alumni here that I, I've never met. And, you know, the, the problem has been we can't bring them all back like this. So this is the first opportunity for this ever to happen because we're always sold out, so we don't have seats. And I think there's close to 100 are coming back. So... What a great opportunity for all of them, and I've been reading and hearing their excitement for this. Uh, and you know, 100 alumni—that's that's a lot for volleyball. I mean, I'd, I'd be curious how many total alumni there are. Total, you know, that's that's going to be a big, ch big chunk of those alumni are going to be back here, and um, and we're we're doing it right. I mean, they're having a big, big thing tonight, and they're they're going to introduce them tomorrow. I mean, this is going to be really special for them. Just what does it say just about how this program has transformed, you know, going from playing in Maple Lee to now playing in Memorial Stadium for a match? Yeah, that's, well, that's what they pay you guys to do, put that in perspective. I, I, and, again, I, 
I, st I was here in 88 when we were in the Coliseum, and we had, we had a couple of really good crowds, so that's when we saw the potential that potentially could happen. But you're right, there will be women here that played in Mabel Lee. And, um, you know, they tore the Mabel Lee gym out because they redid that. But I always, sometimes we would just take our team over there and train periodically just to say, hey, this is what it used to be like. It's this little cracker box. It's super loud in there. They love training over there, and uh, but we would do that to remind them of this is where it all started, and um, <clears throat> um, so I, there'll be some reminders of you guys. It hasn't always been like what you're used to. <laughs> they they weren't getting nil deals back then. <laughs> There's about 40 buses of you know teams coming for this. How important is it to you to set an example for them? Well. They're coming because they want to be a part of this and they want to be a part of Nebraska Volleyball. And a lot of them, you know, they can't get into our regular matches. So uh, hopefully we're going to inspire some future Olympians and future Huskers and young girls that want to be volleyball players because I know that a lot of will be there tonight. And, and so the main thing is just to inspire them and, and really to dream big. I wish Jordan could be here. You know, this would be really special for her, but they're, they're playing, uh, getting ready for the Olympic qualifier. What does this say about the profitability of women's athletics and, and as well as, you know, maybe the popularity of volleyball growth? I think Amy did a great article today. I think we're setting the example of what can be done. And, you know, I, I made that vow in 2001 when I was told, you know, you guys would be nothing if you weren't paid, you know, football wasn't paying for your way. And here we are. And um, so it's, it's – Pretty gratifying, but I, you know, I don't look at it as like, oh yeah, I, I proved that wrong. I, I'm, I look at more of we're showing an example of what can be done, and women's programs and, and need to start thinking about how they can do this too, and and um, so I'm I'm just very proud that it's at Nebraska, and and we have the support and administration here that would take this risk because it was a big risk, and and um, and we had a. President Carter, you know, he said, hey, we're going to sell this thing out, and he's right. I want to see him go do that at Ohio State now. <laughs> By the way, I love the guy, Slapshot. I mean, I call him Slapshot. That was his, his flying name, you know, Top Gun. Any more questions for Coach? What was, uh, what was the big risk about it? Just that it wouldn't go. And we would, you know, it would be a small crowd and weather. I mean, it was, it was a huge risk. You know, how could we set up a stage? How could we do that? And we originally talked about it. We was like, oh, we just put the Terraflex on the, on the field. Well, there's a nine-inch hump in the middle of the field. You can't play volleyball, you know, going sideways or downhill. Um, so there's, there was a, there's a lot that's gone into this. And, I, it, I, you know, you could do, guys could do whole stories on just the preparation that went in. I was down last night talking to the guys that are setting this up, and they're also doing Zach Bryan over in PBA. That's what they do. I can't remember their name, but, I mean, the, the challenges of doing this, and, and, I mean, there's a lot of people and a lot of work that goes into this. It's, it's, it's not just throw out a volleyball court and let's go play. So it's um, a, lot, a lot of things had to, to get done right for this to happen. What if there was rain? What would have happened? I don't know. There was, a, there was a committee to figure that out, but we would try to dry the floor as much as we could and to play in it and, or wait, rain delay like baseball. Worst case, if it was lightning or something, then we, they had a plan. We'd go just move it to Devaney and, and give free beer to everybody else. <laughs> All right, see you guys later. Thanks. Yeah.